Oh, All right. Good morning, everybody. Good and Kodesh. Today is Daf Ayin. Uh, and we left off yesterday, top line of okay. Daf Ayin Ahmed Aleph. Ayin Ahmed Aleph. Okay. Top line of Ayin Ahmed Aleph. Yesterday was a bit of a digression of some of the broader circuits in Parak Maruba. We were talking about Yish, Kona, and things, things of that sort. And we digressed for a little bit to talk about a halacha of Rabbi Yochanan. And the halacha was that when someone steals something from someone else, and right now the item that was stolen was in the Rishus of the Ganev, of the Goslin, it's with Yochanan's member, both the original owner, the victim, and the Goslin are unable to kind of transact with that item. Zel, shalom, meaning the Ganev, right? It's not his, so he obviously can't sell it, meaning legally, he can't like affect the sale. And Zell of Bishainabershusa. And even the original owner, who technically he owns it, he also cannot affect the transaction because it's no longer in his Rashus right now. And we're gonna mm-hmm. kind of pick up on that note. So Amri Nardai, right? They used to say in, in Arda, Locus Vinon Orkasa Amatali. So this is an idea. Orkasa Rashi says is a harsha. So you think of it say almost like a, a power of attorney or something along those lines. So nowadays, if you've got some sort of reason to go to Court, whatever it is, you hire an attorney, right? And you have some sort of engagement letter. In those days, I guess the engagement letter was a little bit more substantive. And the idea was you would literally tell the attorney or whoever was representing you that you would like be makna a portion of the item in dispute over to the attorney. So we'll see in the Gemara. I think the point of this was that you want to be tovea someone to din. And if the baldover isn't there, if the attorney has no, you know, doesn't have a stake in this, then the defendant can be like, I don't want to come talk to you. I want to talk to my Baldover. So the idea was you would kind of be machna over a portion of this thing over to the attorney. And that, and therefore, the attorney kind of owns this thing. And therefore, he can tovea the defendant to din. So you said like the power of attorney? Yeah. And that's that, term, did you use the term harsha? That's what Rashi says. He uses the term harsha. Yeah. Uh, it's the same in or something like that. Yeah, maybe. Okay, yeah. So it's all right. There we go. I just, I feel like I should know these things, but you know, whatever it is, you know, I'm not a very good attorney. Clearly. <laughs> either way, either way, what they said in our duh, exactly. Yeah, what they said in our duh was we'll never write this power of attorney on metalphalin. And Amr of Ashi or of Ashi said, "La Maymar, my time. What's the reason for this?" Amr lay Mishun Rabbi Yochanan. It's because of this rule. And how does that apply over here? Because the idea being, if I am the plaintiff and I believe that right, John Dress, he stole my thing, right? We can still pick on him even if he's not here, right? He stole my thing, right? And I want to hire an attorney. The bottom line is the item in dispute is not in my resource. I can't be mocking the item over to my attorney. I can't prepare this power of attorney. Because I, the thing is not in my rishus right now. And that's really Rav Yochanan's rule, right? I can't transact with something that's stolen from me because it's not in my rishus. Now, uh, uh, the reason why we're focusing on metalphalin specifically is because metalphalin needs to be in my rishus. Karka can't be stolen, right? Karkas are nobody. I mean, if I own the karka, it's not moving anyway. But metalphalin, which is physically in someone else's rishus, so I can't necessarily transact with that item. Okay. Ika de Amri. I mean, Ardai, there's a different version of this where they said in Ardai, locus fina and orcasa a metalpoli de cafre. It's a little bit different, but it's that we can't write this power of attorney if I've already was to veil, let's say John's a court, and John said that I, I, he's completely, he says, I don't know what you're talking about. This is mine, right? It's not yours. Once he has already denied this in court, now we can't prepare a power of attorney, which it sounds like the way Rashi explains, mm-hmm. there's literally a dim on this power of attorney, meaning we can't prepare another document in Besden where I'm basically saying, John has, you know, I'm giving over a portion of my item to this attorney when basically John is saying, it's not yours. Like, Besden isn't going to sign documents signing over my buy list and something to someone else when the item itself is not only in dispute, but someone else denies that I own it. It, it just sounds like there's checker going on. It was when the original Baalim had yield. Would it confound it even further if, in addition to guessing when he was Miyayish, now we have an attorney guessing for us? Well, in this case, happens to be we're saying there wasn't Yish, right? Rabbi Yochanan's halacha only applies when there wasn't Yish. 
So we know for sure that there was me. I am the original Baal. Clearly, I'm not Miyaish because I'm Tobea in I'm pursuing, right? So clearly, I, 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 there is no Yish in, in this case. But the point is, the, the, uh, the different version of this is that we wouldn't write this power of attorney thing if we already have it in the court record where the defendant kind of denied the whole thing. Then it already looks, you know, it, it just kind of looks, um, this is the Mixtic Shikra, where like Bezdin is kind of helping this guy, you know, appoint a power of attorney and give over by list of something where someone else is claiming that it's his. Uh, below Capre, but if he does, wasn't in court and there's no record of him kind of being co for this in Bezdin, then Kusfina, then we, we would prepare this power of attorney. Ba'amri Nardai, Urkasa, this power of attorney, meaning we're, we're going to take a step back a little bit and talk about this power of attorney a little bit. So Urkasa, Delok Sivbe, Zildon, Uzdechiva, Apiklin, Afshaf, Lespa, Mashasha, which is really what we spoke about before we even started. That the point of the power of attorney is that the, the plaintiff, right, he kind of not only appoints an attorney, but he really gives over bilas in the object to the attorney. And if you don't have that language kind of written in the power of attorney, the power of attorney, um, less be mishasha. My time, the amarle, mishum the amarle, because the defendant can always say, hey, he can always say to the attorney, I don't want to come to court to fight with you. You're not the guy that uh, is my counterparty. I want to deal with you know, the person that's actually being, uh, the person that owns the item. So if the plaintiff kind of gives over his rights in the item to the lawyer, so now the lawyer can represent him in court. Now the lawyer can be Tovea, the defendant. But if not, the defendant can always say, I don't want to show up to court to talk to you. I want to talk to, uh, you know, the guy that claims I stole it from him. Amar Abaya, but he says on this, he you don't have to necessarily give over 100% of your items to the attorney. He just needs to have a foot in the door. So as long as you give the attorney half, a third, a quarter, whatever it is, now the attorney becomes the Baldover or a Baldover, and then he can represent you in court. Amar I mean, Amar. How, how can he do that if the uh, Tobea doesn't have physical possession? Well, he never has the items in dispute. Oh. What do you mean? <laughs> How can he be Bakta to the attorney? Well, that's the entire point of, of, of this entire sugi. Yeah. He, he can't be Bakta anything because he doesn't have possession. Yeah, no, that's where we kind of started, right? But I guess there's maybe saying in other cases or something like that, or maybe, you know, now we're kind of going higher level. We're just talking about the orcas in general. So maybe it's not the Palatine. Maybe their dispute is about Karka or it's about something else. Where you wouldn't need to have physical possession over okay. that. Is this is literal ownership, or is this an assignment that you would be making? You would be so no, actually, not, we're, 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 so we're literally literally that's going to be the next line of the Gemara. So let's just hold off, hold off for a second, yeah. right? But the Gemara says, so again, we're kind of giving over some form of ownership to this attorney to enable him to represent me in court. Amar Amemar. So Amemar says, kind of what we were just getting at. He tafats. Once this is all a legal fiction, but kind of once you play this game, it gets a little dangerous. Because what if the attorney wins the case and now the attorney's like, I don't want to give it back to you. You literally gave it to me, right? You are mocking this item over to me. It's mine. It's literally mine. What if you have, uh, you know, kind of a, a non trustworthy attorney and he mm -hmm. just doesn't want to give it back, right? Mm -hmm. And I'll get you only did this. It was also sort of legal fiction, right? You didn't actually want him. I mean, you hired him, You're but exactly. So what happens? So Amar Amemar, he says, no, this is a real, this isn't just some sort of like legal fiction. This is a real thing. You want him to hire the attorney that you trust because he has the ability. He is now the rightful owner of this thing and he can hang on to it. Ravashi Amar, Ravashi argues and he says, came in the Kospale, called him, it's Anive Mendina, Kabela Salai, Shliach Shabi. No, in the contract, it's clearly stated that the plaintiff says, I'm going to cover all the court costs. Now, why in the world would the plaintiff cover all the court costs if he's just giving this over to someone else? Clearly, this is all done. It's all kind of a legal fiction. It's all whatever. It's all done. But obviously, the plaintiff is maintaining his ability to ultimately own this item. And therefore, even if an attorney, you had a kind of a, a, a non-trustworthy attorney, you can always get the money back by saying, listen, I didn't actually give you ownership. This was something that needed to be done to enable you to represent me. Another version of this was because you have this language in the contract that says, I'm going to cover all the court costs, it's showing that at the very least we are shutfin. Not that I own everything, 
but at the very least for Shufin. Lamai Nafkamina, what's the difference for only Shufin or if I appointed you as a Shliach? The Mitvah's Palga, the difference would be, let's say your, you know, your untrustworthy attorney decides that half of it is his. Well, if you're Shufin, then he's entitled to half. If he was just a Shliach, he would be entitled to nothing. But Behil Kasah Shliach Shavi, the bottom line is, we do say that he was only appointed as a Shliach, and therefore, if the attorney tries at the end of the day to kind of keep everything. Over. Uh, if the attorney tried to keep everything, we wouldn't listen. We would make him give it back to the plaintiff. Okay. Okay, so the next Mishnah, we're going to go through a, a, a number of cases, all of which we're going to say that if there was a Gneva and a Tvicha or a Mechir or whatever it is, you're going to be high of the Dalai Behain. A lot of the cases that we're going to go through in this Mishnah, it's a laundry list of cases. A lot of them, there isn't really much of a Chiddush in this Mishnah. But as the Gemara often does, in the next Mishnah, on the next Mishnah, we're going to have slight mm. tweaks to these cases to show mm. that you are actually putter the Dalai Behe. Mm -hmm. So some, some of these cases aren't going to have much of a Chiddush, but in mm -hmm. contrast to the next case, the Gemara is going to bring out a Chiddush. Okay, so we'll go through a, a list of cases again. In all of these cases, mm -hmm. you're going to be Chayiv the Dalai Behe. Ganav al Pishnayim, let's say a person steals with two, two witnesses, the Tavachum Achar al Piyam, and the same two witnesses see him either shech the thing or sell the thing. Clearly, you're going to be Chayv the Dalvei. That is the classic case of Chayv Dalvei. Oh, al pi shnaim acherim. Or what if there was a separate two Adim? So two Adim saw me steal it. Another two Adim see me sell it or shecht it. They can combine. And again, Misham arba v'chamisha. Okay, ganav umachar b'shabes. Let's say I sold and then I sold the item on Shabbos. Now again, let's look at the language. It doesn't say. Tavach the Shabbos. No, right? It says, I says, sold on Shabbos. Right. right. Rashi points out because if I shecht it on Shabbos, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be chayv the Dalvei because of Kim Levi Rav. I mean, if I shecht on Shabbos, I'm chayv Misa Midei Adam, right? It's one of the Lamatas Malachos. And therefore, I wouldn't, wouldn't be chayv the monetary Dalvei. But if I sell something on Shabbos, I'm, I mean, it's not a nice thing to do. I, you shouldn't transact on Shabbos, but it's not Misa Midei Adam. And therefore, if I only sell on Shabbos, I am going to be chayav the dalvei. Ganavu machar lavodazara. Same idea. Let's say I, I I stole it and then I sold it for someone else to do avodazara. If I shecht it for avodazara, I'm chayav misa. I didn't shecht it for avodazara. I sold it to someone else to do avodazara. I'm still going to be chayav the dalvei. Ganav v'tavach yom akipurim. Let's say I stole it and now I shechted it on yom akipurim. Yom akipurim is different than Shabbos because yom kippur. Even if I'm over. If I do Malach on Yom Kippur, it's not Misibi De Adam. I'm only Chayav Kares because I'm only Chayav Kares. I'm not. Chayv, there's no Kim Lebed Rav Amine. And therefore, even if I shecht it on Yom Kippur, I'm still going to be Chayav the Dalai Behe. Ganav. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're only, it's Chayav Kares if you do Malacha on Yom Kippur. Uh -huh. You're not Chayav Steel. You're not Chayav Misa. Only Bidei Shemayim. Exactly. Ganav Mishal Aviv. What if I stole from my father, and then I shechted and I sell it, and then my father unfortunately passes away. So the point is that I would have now been Yorish, everything that he owned, right? So, or another case, let's say I steal it and I shechted, and then I makdish the corpse, the carcass. In these cases are going to be high. Let's say I steal it. To the estate? Yeah, something like that. And again, mm -hmm. this because case, the state has to be broken up. Yeah, this case doesn't have as much of a finish. The mm -hmm. finish is going to be in kind of future machines. What if he died prior to me selling or shafting? So if it was shalot to that, shalot humokar, that's what the Gemara is going to get into. So again, this case maybe isn't much of a finish because again, you did everything while he was still alive. But in contrast to kind of future machines, there's going to be chedushim down the line. And this is all going to be, Yoel's going to deal with all of this. Gana um, v'tabach l'refua, let's say I stole... And then I shechted, but I didn't shechted to eat. I shechted it because someone needed some medical treatment. Or hashochet chulin ba'azara. Let's say, oh, sorry, I skipped the line. Ola klavim. So I shechted it for refua, or I shechted it to give it to the dogs. Still, I'm going to be chayv dal bey. Hashochet v'nimtzah shtrepa. What if I shechted the animal, and it turns out it was not a good shkita, not because there's anything wrong with the shkita, but the animal happened to be a trepa, right? We did something with the lungs, whatever they do, and it turned out it was a trepa. Or hashochet right. chulin ba'azara. I shech an animal full in bazaar, and now it's I'm not allowed to eat it, right? Mishal and Tashumi Arba Vakamisha. The Tanakama says that you still are high of the Dal the Dal So the point is if I shechted, it, I'm high of the Dal Bahay. But Shimon Potter, Bishnei Shimon is Potter in these last two cases, 
and this is an idea that's come up throughout uh, the Dafyomi cycle a number of times. Rashi points it out. This is Rav Shimon Shita, that a Shita, which is Lav, Shmei Shita, sorry, Shita, she ain't a Ruya, Lo Shma Shita. And again, this is figures that we're not going to see today, and hmm. Yoel will have to, uh, we'll learn them with Yoel. Okay. But the bottom line is we had a long laundry list of cases where you're high of the dollar day. And one is what, what was one of the first ones? That what if two Aiden saw me steal it? Another two Aiden see me shaft it? I'm still high of the dollar day. So we don't have one set of Aiden that saw the Gneva and the Tvicha. It's two people saw the Gneva, two people saw the Tvicha. They can combine to be Machai of me, the dollar day. So the Gemara says, Lema, Masis, and the Loka Rebbe Akiva. Let's say our Mishnah is not like Rabbi Akiva. Dear Rabbi Akiva, Amar Davar, Belochati Davar. Rabbi Akiva has a Limud, and in the right, the Pasuk says, Al Pi Shnayim Edim, O Al Pi Shlosha Edim Yakum Davar, that the Edim need to see the entire thing. You can't have split Edims. Titania, because we have a Brysa. Amar Rabbi Yossi, Kshalach Abba Chalafta, Eitzel Rabbi Yossi. Rabbi Yossi said that when Abba Chalafta, Rashi points out that Rabbi Yossi's father's name was Chalafta. So what he was saying was, when I saw my father, Chalafta, it's Rabbi Yochanan Ben-Nuri, Lil Mo Torah, the Amri Law Summit, a different version is Rabbi Yochanan Ben-Nuri, it's Al Abba Chalafta. Either way, Amar Lo, they, they talk about the following Shaila, and this has to do with Cheska Sabatim. So in a few months, we're going to be learning the third parak of Baba Basra, apparently is literally in our calendar year. Uh, I think it's even in our Jewish year. Um, where we're going to get to Cheska Zabatim. So what is Cheska Zabatim? was the very first mission of Cheska Zabatim. You have a guy that's living in a house, and someone comes over to him, and he says, you're living in my house. And it's like, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm living in this house for... Yeah, I mean, yeah, I've been living in this house for years. I don't know what you're talking about. So if he has a star to prove that he was, it's his house, wonderful. If he doesn't have a star, then we have to see how long was he living there. And so long as he was living there for three years, we can say it's fine that you don't have a star anymore. But you need proof that you were living there for three years. So top line of Ahmed... Ayin Ahmed Beis. So Amar Lo, this is the case. We have two Aiden that say he was there and Tafshin Pei Dalit. Shnia Bifnei Shnaim. And two people that say he was there, Tafshin Pei Hei. And Shlish Yes Bifnei Shnaim. And then two others say he was there, Tafshin Pei Ba. But we don't have two Aiden mm-hmm. that saw him there for three full years. Two mm-hmm. Aiden were there for the first year, two Aiden for the second mm-hmm. year, two Aiden for the third year. Amar Lo, Harei So both Abba Chalafta and I guess Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri, they all agreed that this is a proper Chazaka, that these six Adim can combine. Amar lo, Afani Omer Kain. You're right, I agree. Elish Rabbi Akiva Cholek Badavar. Rabbi Akiva is Cholek. Shahi Rabbi Akiva Omer Davar Velo Chazi Davar. Rabbi Akiva said, he has Shita, I guess, that you need one set of Adim to see the whole thing. You can't have three different sets of Adim to combine. What's the point? In our Mishnah too, our Mishnah sounds like you can have two separate Adim. Two saw the Geneva, two saw the Tzvicha, and they can combine to Mechai of Dalit Behe. But Rabbi Kiva would seem to be Cholik on that. Rabbi Kiva would say, no, you need one set of Adim to see the whole thing. Amar um, Abaya, Abaya says, I, I don't think it's Muchaf that Rabbi Kiva wouldn't agree with us over here. Because I feel tamer Rabbi Akiva. I can, I would tell you that Rabbi Kiva would even agree to us here. Mi lo moj Rabbi Akiva, Yishnayim omrim kidesh, Yishnayim omrim baal, da'af agav de edeh biya trichle de kedushin, so he says, no, I think Rabbi Akiva would agree. Why? Because Rabbi Akiva's issue with one set of Adim, you know, standing on its own, is that like in the case of Cheska Zabatim, for example, each set of Adim isn't actually testifying to anything meaningful. One year does nothing for us. But for example, let's say one of the cots of Adim is giving us Adus that is relevant you know, even for something else, then it would be different. So the example that, that Abai gives over here is let's say you have people come into Besden and say that this girl, this woman was Mizana. I know that she, uh, you know, had Bia out of wedlock. So we would say to her, well, were you at her wedding? Yeah, it wasn't at, his, wasn't at her wedding. I mean, he's not an Aiden Kedushin. He was the Aiden Bia, right? We can rely on other Aiden to say that they were at her wedding, right? At a Taras Yala six years ago. Why? Mm-hmm. Because the Adim that were at her wedding, that is good enough Adis on its own. There's a reason for us to have Adim that would say that her being married has other halakhic ramifications. She becomes an Asian fish. So the fact that the Adis on the wedding can stand on its own, therefore, the fact that a few years later we have Adis on the Bia, and the Adis on the Bia, of course, would be meaningless if she wasn't married, but we don't need the Adi Bia to necessarily stand on its own, so long as the first cot of Adim has their own, you know, reason to testify. Perhaps with uh, an issue being Mazana, it's different 
because in that case, 8 f and M is sort of, and therefore maybe it's one maple. So we, we wouldn't kill her because of 8 f and M. So we're talking about Renard, we, want, we might want to take her out to do ski lifting. Uh -huh. yeah. But the point is, every, everyone would agree, even Rabbi Akiva mm -hmm. would agree, that when it comes to the two Aiden that saw her being Mazana, mm -hmm. they don't have to be the same two Aiden that saw, that saw mm -hmm. her getting married a few years ago. And the right. reason is because the agent that saw her get married, that is a proper mm -hmm. agent on its own. That's agent that stands up in court for other reasons, right? We want to know that she's a married woman, that she's now an Asia Sish, yeah, as no opposed way. to the Chaska Zabatim, where for the two people say, year one, I saw him there, that does nothing for us. There's no okay. difference in how often between property ownership Aiden and uh, and Chaska's uh, Aiden? Sorry, what, what, what do you mean? In the validity of the Aiden, I'm saying. To, in other words, it's saying that across the board, you've got two that valid that val verify that she was actually married. Yeah, it's just it's valid, just like we have the two agents saying that that's really the other guy's property. Yeah, well, the so question is, there. but the question is, if you have two agents saying he was there for a year, I mean, what does that what does that do for us? It doesn't establish like a right? We need three of those. So the fact that they're coming in for one year just doesn't do much on its own. But two people oh. coming in and saying this woman got married. Oh. That does a lot on its own. Now that you've established her to be an Asha Sish. So now when two other people come in, so that's what Abai is saying. And Hatanami mm -hmm. Abai is saying, in our case too, and you kind of apply that same logic to our case, right? Two people come in and say, you trapped an animal. All right, that doesn't do much for us because it very well could have been his. But if two people come in and say he stole an animal, that is very meaningful Adas. He's now high Kfel, right? So because the first two Adin are meaningful and, and that Adas can stand on its own, when we later have two other Adin that say he shafted the animal, that we can combine with the Ede Ganeva. The same way the Ede Bia can be combined with the Ede Kedushin. But by Cheska Zapakim, it's a totally different ballgame. You can't combine the, the Adam for on this year for Adam on that year because each one has, you know, there's no real relevance on its own. Okay. Make sense? Good enough? Either way, the Rabbanan, the Rabbanan argue with Rabbi Akiva, and they say that even in Cheska Zabatim, you could have three different sets of Aden that all testify to one year. What about this drasha of Dabar Vlochatsi Dabar? What do they do with that? So, Hai Dabar Vlochatsi Dabar, Lem Ute Mai, Lem Ute Echad Omer Echad Begaba, the Echad Omer Echad Bekrisa. So, again, the context over there is we're trying to, I guess there's a, a, a woman. And we want to know, well, and we want to know if mm. she has base hours, if she doesn't have base hours, for whatever mm -hmm. the reason that we'd want to know that. And you have one A that says, I saw one here on her hand. Mm -hmm. And one guy says, I saw one here on her back. Mm -hmm. And the question is, can those combine to create base hours? And the Rabbanans say no, because we need, that's only a chatsi dover. Like Mara says, like, come on, I chatsi dover, chatsi ados, you don't even have two people testifying to the same thing. Like, you know, Bishlam of the first case where we need three years, you have two people testifying to the same thing. It's just not necessarily all three years. Here you have one aide saying one thing and one aide saying another. How in the world is that supposed to combine? Like Mara says, you're right. Let's just re, re uh, we'll just say this a little differently. It's not one person saying the hero is in the front and one person saying the hero is in the back. You have two people saying, I saw one here in the front, two people saying one here in the back. So Hani Amri Katani, the Hani Amri Katani, both of them are essentially not giving a proper agent because each of them are saying that she's a katana, and we can't combine the two. And if you're, you know, one of the things that uh, the second toast on the page really deal with is how is this any different than the Cheska Zabatim case? In the Cheska Zabatim case, we had two people saying year one, right. two people saying year two, two people saying year three, and we said you can't, you're allowed to combine that. But over here, if two people say she has one here in the front, and two people say she has one here in the back, that you can't combine. So what's the difference exactly? So um, so this explains that at least in the case of Cheska Zabatim, the fact that you have two people testifying to one year does have some relevance in the sense that, let's say we can't establish that that guy was the rightful owner, we would still have two Adams saying he lived there for a year. That means he probably owes rent to the rightful owner. So there is something that these Adam are doing Whereas in the case of the girl, there's really nothing that these Adam are doing. Um, but we're literally, quite literally, splitting hairs here. I mean, it's, it's, it's. <laughs> no pun intended. Yeah, that was, that was very much intended. Very much intended. Okay. But either way. 
So So the next case in the Mishnah was if a person steals and then he sells on Shabbos, he's going to be chayiv. Why? Because Kim Lebed doesn't apply because selling on Shabbos, you're not chayiv misa. Now, if you shecht on Shabbos, you'll be chayiv misa. But if you sell on Shabbos, mm-hmm. you are not chayiv misa. And therefore, you're going to be chayiv. But we have another brisa that says mm-hmm. that when you steal and sell on Shabbos, you're going to be putter because of Kim Lebed Rabbah. So what mm-hmm. is that case? So I'm Rabbi Bechama. So are you going to have to pay though? Aren't you going to have to pay? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, um, Rabbi Rachama, Kitanya, he the potter. When the Bryce says they're going to be potter, is the Omer Lo, this is a goofy case, but Omer Lo, a coat to Enam, to Ena C, the Tikni Li, Kenebu Se. That's where the buyer of this item that was stolen says to the Ganev, he says, I'm going to pay you. Uh, fruits from my field. Go to my field and cut off some of the tain from the tree. Now, that's a malach on Shabbos to cut off stuff from the tree. If that's how you acquire the animal, so now the ganev is kind of doing a malach of Shabbos as he's selling the thing. Now the sale is coming together with malach on Shabbos and he's going to be putter for the ganeva because he's going to be chayim misa. But the Gemara says, Amri, the kevan de kitava le kaman betina lo amrina le zil shlim de mechayim benaf shohu. The Gemara gives a very interesting uh, question. The Gemara says, I don't understand. I don't think that's a proper Mechira. Why would that not be a proper Mechira? Let's say the Ganav goes and he cuts the Tain, right, or whatever it is. And uh, now the buyer, the buyer of this animal that was stolen, says, you owe me this animal. And the guy says, no, I don't. I, he just denies it. You can't be Tobeah him in court. Buyer cannot be Tobeah the Ganav in court. And he can't say, listen, you either owe me your animal that I bought, or you got to pay me for my tainim that you cut on Shabbos. Why can't he do that? Because since the guy cut the tainim on Shabbos and he's chayav misa, Kim Levi Dravimine says, mm-hmm. can't be chayav even money to the seller, to the mocha, mm-hmm. to the locale, to the buyer, sorry, the guy who bought mm-hmm. the animal. He is totally absolved from any sort of monetary payment because of the fact that he's chayav misa. Well, if he's putter from all monetary payment, this isn't a valid mechira. And if this isn't a valid mechira, then he shouldn't be chayv the dal of behay. That's what the... And if it is, then it shouldn't be a mechira at all. Yes. Then it shouldn't be a mechira at all. Because that can't be our case. I mean, there can't be a case where there's a mechira and he's putter the dal of behay. Because in that case, it wouldn't be considered a valid mechira. Because again, you can never force, you can never enforce the person in court to pay you to give you the animal that you rightfully bought. So Ella Omer, a papa, a papa says a different answer. He says, But Omer lo zrok gnebosech lechatseri, the tiknili gnebosech. He says like this it's not going to be a case where you're cutting figs. That, that's not going to work. The case is like this where the buyer says to the Ganev, I want you to give me the animal by chucking it from Rosh Hashanah into my chatser. Now this is going to be hotza. Right, and therefore the Chilul Shabbos is going to happen exactly at the same second as the Mechira, and therefore again I'm going to be putter on the Dalav Behe, the Ghana is going to be putter on the Dalav Behe because the Dalav Behe, the Mechira happened at the exact same second as he was Chilul Shabbos. So again, the Chilul Shabbos isn't going to be cutting the Te'enim from a tree; it's going to be throwing an animal from Rosh Hashanah into Rosh Hashanah. Most Rosh Hashanahs, exactly. But the Gemara says, I feel like we're overcomplicating this for no real reason. But Kiman, you must be holding like Rabbi Akiva. So again, this is a big sugya in Misaka Shabbos, where when you're throwing something from one Rosh Hashanah, Rosh Hashanah, into a Rosh Hashanah, but it's going over the airspace of a Rosh Hashanah. So Rabbi Akiva, Shita is that we view it, even while it's in the air, we view it as if it's on the ground, and therefore you are Chayav Otsa. Because you went from Rosh Hashanah to Rosh Hashanah to Rosh Hashanah. No, we have to go back. I don't think so. But maybe, I don't, I don't remember. But the Rabbanon, they said, no, we don't view it like that. We said, well, it's in the airspace. We kind of wait until it lands. And therefore, if it went from Rosh Sarabim to Rosh Sarabim, with Rosh Sayyachat Be'emsa, assuming you didn't go a full four hours in Rosh Sarabim, then at least it's possible that you wouldn't have done Hotza. I mean, they don't view it as landing in Rosh Sayyachat in the meantime. So the Gemara is saying, according to you, if you want to say that the, the, the Mechira and the and the Malachan on Shabbos happens at the exact same second, you have to hold like Rabbi Akiva that when it enters the airspace of the Chatzar, it's as if it's on the ground. And therefore, you're high both at the exact same second. But if you hold like the Rabbanon, then you're not going to be over the Shabbos until it actually lands from a purpose of a Kenyan perspective. A person acquires an item once it enters the airspace mm-hmm. of his Chatzar. 
Once it's in a, a chutz or right. even if it's in the air, he's already kona the item. So over here, the geneva, or the mechira, I should say, mm -hmm. happens a split second before your of Shabbos. Because I was Kona the Lokeach, as Kona the animal, when it's in the airspace of his Chatzar, but you're not going to be high of the Shabbos until it lands, if you hold it the Rabban. Yeah. I just want to make sure I understand. Yeah. In order for it to be most of the Rishus to Rishus, mm -hmm. logic would indicate it has to be leaving the Rishus tangibly, it was there, laying, it was yeah. laying, and it arrives. So that's yes. on the Umber, I understand. Is the assumption of Manda Umber that's saying that once it hits the air, that if for all intents and purposes, we know it's going to land. Exactly. Yeah. So that is, that's exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But it still happens, you know, two seconds beforehand. So therefore, him lay bedrava is only going to work if it literally happens at the same time. If the mechira happens before the the chil of Shabbos, right. then you're going to be chayiv the dal base. Well, again, we have a brisa that says your potter. So the Gemara says I could understand this answer of where an animal was in Rosh Rabin and the seller picked it up and threw it into the chutzner. I could only understand that this would potter you from the dal Hey, if you hold like Rabbi Akiva, who says that once it's in the airspace, mm -hmm. even for Shabbos purposes, we view it like it's on the floor. But if you hold like the Rabbanon, who say that we wait till it actually lands. Aren't you high of the on the Geneva prior to being high of the Hill of Shabbos? And therefore, why was the Bryce say Potter? You don't know until it actually lands. Well, I guess I guess they say you do know it's literally in the air and it's gonna be a gust of wind comes and, and pushes it back and it doesn't oh there's no such thing as Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, I uh that is a good question. I, I don't know. But uh, no, I guess you're right. I mean, I guess we're talking about Chatzar Mishnah Maris, by the way. So there's a gate. So it's like, what's a wind going to do? It's going to push it above the gate. Mm -hmm. No, he's saying go the push it wind back. doesn't allow it to actually go from the get to the second. No, no, no. Wait, wait a second. We are talking about it's now cleared the fence of the Chatzar. So it's in a Chatzar Mishnah Maris. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the question is while it's here, so it gets there. Okay. Uh, Okay. So the Omer, so they say, you know what, we'll just tweak it a little bit. Where the Lokach says to the Ganiv, we're going to say that I'm not going to be Kona, your item, until it lands. Now, according to everyone, the Ganev, the Mechira, and the Isra Shabbos all happen exactly at the same time. The hotza, all right, so that's how the Gemara kind of got out of it. But Rava Amar, you realize that we're talking about Avarion, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah seriously. <laughs> Rava Amar, Olam Kravi says, I can actually make the first case work where you were cutting the figs, right? What was the problem with the cutting the figs? The problem was that it's not a valid sale because, because the fact that we can never enforce the Ghana to actually pay over to the Lokach, it's not a good sale. And it wouldn't be, it wouldn't constitute a Mathira, and that wouldn't be our case. But Rava says, I actually say that maybe we have arrived from somewhere else, that that's not how we would do this. It's Esnan Asra Torah. Amazingly, this is the second time this week that the concept of Esnan Zona comes into the daf. So again, what's the concept of an Esnan Zona? You pay <clears throat> something, you pay property to a Zona, that thing that you paid her can't go on them as bad. Right, so if you paid over with an animal, if you paid over with wine, if you paid over with whatever it is, that can't ultimately go on the mizbeach. So esnan is asra Torah, but afilu baalimo, and even if, God forbid, a person you know paid his mother or one of the other arayas to be mizana with him, right? Still, that uh, th that stuff would be asra. Now vi tavala come on medina. Now let's say a person's mom comes over to him in court and says, "Hey, we had a deal." And we went through with the act, and he never paid me. Right? Can she be tobea her son in court for this? Now, me and Rina Le Kulam Havla, would we ever tell the son you got to pay her? No, Asnan, of course not. Ella Apa Gab the Ki Ka Tavala Bedina, Lo Amrina Le Zil Havla, Haven Ki Yavla Havi Asnan, Achanami, Apa Gab, Lenin Tashlum, and Tava Bedina, come on, Lo Amrina Le Zil Slim, Hiloaka Kaven the Kamakna Le, Bahaki Havia, so we'll just say it outside. Yeah, when I was a little bit wordy. But the, but the point is, it's saying like this, the son is never going to be high of the Esnan to his mom, meaning the mom can never enforce him to pay it in court. Why? Because it might be revenue. If I hired my mom to be a prostitute and I was Mizana with my mom, I'm high of Misa. 
me and my mom. We're both high Misa. Everyone's high Misa. So if he comes to court and says, you know, he owes me the hundred dollars, right? Bez is never going to enforce me to pay the hundred dollars. <laughs> Having said that, if the son does give the mom the hundred dollars, or in our case, the wine or whatever it is, mm-hmm. it still constitutes Esnan Zona. That wine still can't go on the mistake. The fact that it wasn't enforceable in court doesn't matter. Well, Same thing over here. Because of Kim Levi Dravamine, if a person is Mizana with his mother, he's Chayat Misa. So anything, any monetary payment that he's Chayat, oh, okay. he would have been Potter. Same thing over here. If a person, right, on Shabbos, if a person makes a deal and his payment for a Mecher is going to be cutting off figs, so he's not going to be Chayat to actually pay for these figs because okay. it was, you know, because it was Chilo Shabbos. Yeah. Having said that, if he does pay for the thing, mm-hmm. It's still considered a valid mecher. Mm-hmm. And that's what we're saying over the Bryce is saying that if mm-hmm. you're gonna umachar b'shabes, mm-hmm. you're gonna be potter because of Kimle Bidrabim Nate, but it's still a valid mechira. The fact that you can't enforce the person to pay doesn't take this out of the realm of being a mechira, just like the mother and son situation, the money is not no longer estimated.